Hey, how's it going, everybody? I wanted to make a video over some major breakthroughs that really helped me with freestyling and taking what we know about music theory and applying it in a real intuitive and predictive way. And so I wanted to make a video on that, but I thought if I'm going to go ahead and do that, I might as well take you from the start because there are also things as someone who learned music theory and everything through YouTube, uh, it can get messy sometimes. Uh, and I thought I might as well just make a clear and concise video start to finish over everything you could possibly want to know. So this is going to be a bit of a longer video, but my goal here is to just give you as much information as possible to get you started. Either if you're a beginner, if you already know this stuff and don't care to learn anymore, but maybe want some of the more advanced or intuitive things that I've found that are helpful, feel free to fast forward. There will be timestamps. And so, without further ado, let's just get started. Briefly, I just wanted to mention that even if you are consistent and always trying to learn, just consistency can not be enough. So, please don't get discouraged. Even if you are applying yourself and you're still not learning, it could be how you're learning, and this video is intended to try and give you building blocks that will all lead on top of each other. For instance, I actually would not recommend just learning other bands' songs. Yes, you may really like them, and it's really cool to learn a song if it's important to you, but that doesn't actually teach you anything about the music or how you want to learn it. I've tried to learn piano many times before, and what would happen is I finally learned the one song through pushing through and it's really difficult. I don't know what I'm doing really. And then, okay, great. I have it. And then I play that. I've played that song for a month or two and then boom, I'm bored of it. And I have no actual way of progressing. And then I give up, which is what I've done years ago. And so when I got into it this time, I actually went about learning the scales and all sorts of ways to just learn music. So, whatever instrument you're using, chances are you're gonna have 12 notes per octave. And if that's confusing, because you obviously see more than 12 notes here, we say 12 notes to the octave. We count this, this, and this as the same. They all sound the same, just higher or lower. And that's why we have this 12 note repeating pattern. So we have. So that's our 12 sounds that we're going to work with. Each of these have a name, starting with the note that is to the left of the two black keys. The first step, this is C. We're going to skip the black keys for now. This is D. This is E. This is F. This is G, this is A, this is B, and this is C. Now, how do we call the black keys? Well, depending on if you're going up or down from it, we would call it sharp or flat. So while this could be G sharp and A flat, it's helpful if you just are a little context dependent. If we're going down from A, it might make more sense to call it A flat, if we're going up from G, it might make more sense to call it G sharp. So we have C. The black key right next to it is C sharp. We have D, if you remember. We have D sharp. Now there's no black key here, which we're going to get into in just a second. So skipping that for now, we're going to come up to F. F sharp. G sharp. 
A sharp. Same thing here, no black key. Now, just for the record, if anyone wants to know, we have B, B flat, we have A flat, G flat, E flat, and D flat. All right, so there you go. It's a good idea to know the names of the notes you're playing, just because it can be helpful when trying to learn things and you just have a common language to talk about what notes you're referring to. Now, the other glossary thing we need to get out of the way before we really start learning is we're gonna be using numbers to refer to how many keys we're moving on the piano. And there's two ways we can do this. There are whole steps and then there are half steps. Half steps are the smallest interval you can take. So you can take 12 half steps in an octave you can take six whole steps in an octave. So, remember where we didn't have those black keys? These are a half step apart, much like a black key from a white key would be. So this is also a half step. That's just how it's laid out. Just know this keyboard layout is an intentional choice. Guitars are all half steps. This has a visual pattern. So without even thinking or hearing, I can say this is G sharp. So when counting whole steps or intervals, as we'll use when talking about chords, we count the first one as one. So this is one, two, three, this is a half step, so when we start to talk about scales, we're not going to use all 12 keys. We call them intervals. So we're going to pick out seven notes from these 12 to play as a scale. And when talking in intervals, we say one. The one we're starting on is one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight is the same as that one, so it's not considered a new note. Half steps we do not count the note we are starting on. That's very important. So if I say take four half steps from C, you wouldn't go one, two, three, four. You would go zero, one, two, three, four. Maybe write that down, try and keep that in mind. That's very important. I'll of course remind you throughout this video, but those are the important distinctions. So. One really good thing you can do to learn is learn scales. Scales are a helpful grouping of notes that no matter what are gonna sound good. For instance, those are just random bits from a scale. I wasn't even thinking about how it was gonna sound. I'm just pressing it because I have those seven notes memorized and they always sound good together. Another example would be that's another scale um, and it's very helpful and we're gonna get to it we're gonna get to chords but you actually can build chords through scales. You use that grouping to build chords. So again, that's another great way that this is gonna build on top of itself. So the more scales you learn, the more chords you'll have, and it's a very good way to go about it. There are some problems with that approach, but we're getting there. This is a long video, and again, I'm teaching you literally everything I could possibly to get you where you want to be. Let's learn C major. Let's learn G major. Let's learn F major. Let's learn D major. So that's another example of parroting. That would get super exhausting and memorizing all 12 scales is not a good way to go about it. 
and you don't actually learn why that's the scale and all that. So instead of teaching you all 12 scales, which is almost a waste of effort, why don't I teach you how the scale is built? Then no matter where you start, you can just know. So let's do that. There are seven major scale types. Right now, we're just gonna go over a major scale type or Ionian. What you do is you have your starting note and you're gonna take a whole step. You're gonna take another whole step and then a half step. No black key here, so this is the closest note we can do. Then a whole step, then a whole step another whole step then no black key right where we want to take our half step pianos are set up for c major pretty easily because it's just all the white keys um no other scale is going to be like that remember let's do that one more time starting point we're going to go whole whole half whole 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 half let's just start on another random key so we're on d sharp a whole step, two half steps, so we're gonna go one, two, that's a whole step, whole step, a half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Now you know G sharp or D sharp as well. We'll do one more just for example. We're gonna do A sharp. Here's our starting point. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step whole step, half step. That's our third scale. I don't need to do them all. Just know that that is the formula. And there you go. You have all the major scales already. And feel free to just play around with that. Try and memorize those seven chord, seven notes, and then just play around with it. So there you go. That's already set you up for success. Now, there are seven different main scales you could build. So rather, which, which keep in mind, learning the seven different scales is already easier than if you memorized all 12 major scales. You could learn all seven scales just on C and know exactly how to build it no matter where you are. Now, to be completely transparent, I don't even have all seven memorized. It's not necessary. If you need to refer to a chart like I am going to, that's completely okay. You're usually not going to need to have all seven memorized because you might not be using them in succession. It can be much more useful to just study up before if you know you're going to need one of these or again memorize the steps which i still have not done but because it's valuable i will give you them in this video because that would be silly to tell you about them and not go over it if you're not interested skip ahead to the next part although this is pretty useful information as well as one thing i would like to correct going forward some people might call these modes. I'm going to distinctly call them scale types on purpose. If you were to look up what are the seven modes on the internet right now, you will see two different things. You will see what I've written down here or people saying that modes are starting on not the first note of C major. Basically, and I'll show you why this is such a drastic example. Some people might say C Dorian is this. Just starting on D, going to D, and C major. What my scale type says about C Dorian is that it is this. Those are two very different things. First one was D, 
second mode, or de Dorian, as I feel it is wrongly called. Now my C Dorian scale type. The difference is we're still going from C to C, but we're changing the order of our whole and half steps. I think this is much more useful because you're still in C, whereas some people say the second mode of C is essentially just starting on D, going to D. The third mode of C would be starting on E going to E. And then it will wrongly get called C Phrygian. Now, if I'm wrong, I apologize. I'm just trying to have two distinct different types. And I find that knowing different whole and half step combinations is much more useful than just simply starting on a different note of the major scale. Okay, hey, what's up everybody? Real quick, editing Michael, just gonna interject here real quick. The one thing I said wrong is that the online resources do say that the second mode of C is D Dorian, the third mode of C is E Phrygian, and so on. That's unfortunately correct, but it's about the worst way you could teach it. The only thing that it is doing is teaching you one mode of one scale all in a row what it's saying is, if you want to know the whole and half steps of the Dorian scale, you would play C major, starting and ending on the second note in C major, and then transposing the amount of whole and half steps to whichever thing you wanted to do. So if you wanted to know what C Dorian was, you would play D to D in C major, then remember the whole and half steps, and then go back to C, and then take the same number of whole and half steps. So if you need a physical reference to every single mode, starting on C, you'll get Ionian. Starting on D, in C major, you'll get the half steps for Dorian. Starting on E, you'll get the whole and half steps for Phrygian. Starting on F, you'll get the whole and half steps for Lydian. On the fifth, you'll get the whole and half steps for Mixolydian. The sixth, you'll get the whole and half steps for the Aeolian scale. And the seventh, you will get the whole and half steps for Locrian that you can then transpose back down to starting on C. So I stand by that it is completely stupid to teach it that way because they don't specify that you have to transpose down. They just say, hey, this is the second mode of C, it's D Dorian. Well, you're playing D Dorian, not C Dorian, and it shouldn't be explained in that way. It's helpful if you need a physical reminder, but you have to transpose. This is a formula to remember other formulas to then transpose. So there you go. What I say in the rest of the video is still not wrong. I think it's better to do scale types as the modes are scale types of other starting notes. So that's where the confusion is. I think if people are going to teach that, they should teach you that you still need to transpose it and it doesn't have any relation with C. The second mode of C being D Dorian has no relation to C other than you started on C major and skip the first note. So that is the context. It is 100% cleared up now. I hope that makes sense to you. Enjoy the rest of the video. Bye-bye. So now you know, we're gonna go over the scale types and not the modes. If you wanna do the fourth mode, it's just the fourth note. Fifth mode, fifth note, you know, it's, I don't think it's very useful. Whereas these actually give you new notes that you would otherwise not be hitting. So C Ionian, we know that. Also called major. C Dorian is going to be our starting point. We're gonna go whole, half, whole, 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 
half whole. You can pause, rewind, you might need to go over these a couple times, or write them down like I have done. I'll do that one one more time. Starting point, whole, half, whole, 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 half, whole. The last one is our octave. C, Phrygian. We're going to go C, starting point. We're going to go half, whole, 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 half, whole, whole. Next one, C, Lydian. Starting point is C. We're going to go whole, 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 half, whole, whole, half. Let's do that one more time. We're going to go C, whole, whole, half. Oh. We're going to do that one more time. C, whole, 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 half. Whole, whole, half. C, mixolydian. We're going to go C, whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole. We're going to do that one more time. C, whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole. C, aeolian otherwise known as C minor, is going to be C, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. That's one I know by heart. Major and minor are the two most used scale types. So one more time. C, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. Last one we're going to be going over is C Locrian. We're going to start on C. We're going to go half whole, whole, half, whole, whole, whole. Very interesting sounding one. One more time. Starting point, we're going to go half whole, whole, half, whole, whole, whole. So there are the seven main scale types. And that was all just scales played in C. So there are 12 different colors you could make that. They're all gonna sound identical. You're doing the same number of jumps because all notes are equally divided. I think it's by like 50 or 100 cents. Yeah, there's 1200 cents. Each note is 100 cents apart which is a way we refer to tuning. So no matter where you start, it will sound the same. But your starting note is different and therefore it takes on a little bit of a different color. So if you never wanted to play outside of C, you would get a lot more use using the seven scale modes in C rather than you would just learning the 12 major scales on each note individually. All right, there are two ways to build chords. We're moving on from scales, but chords are directly tied into scales, and that's why we learn scales first. There are two ways to build chords. I'm gonna go over the first and most common way of building them, and then give what I think might be a better way to build them, but they both have the pros and cons. So, the first way is to know what scale you're in. And we're going to be talking in intervals, okay? Remember how we said half steps are the note you're starting on is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. For right now, we're talking about scales. We're going to talk about intervals. So the first note of our scale, we're going to call 1. So, we're going to be in C major. If you remember all the white notes... And here's what we're going to do to build your chords. And this is how you are taught most, most often, I would say, is that you know your scale. 
you're just going to play three notes and skip an interval in between. So we're going to start on C, skip D, go to E, skip F, and go to G. There you go. That is your first chord. Now we're going to just walk over to the next one. Skip. We're starting on D. We're going to skip E. We're going to play F. We're going to skip G. And we're going to play A. Now, you don't even have to think about counting them up. You can literally just move your fingers across. And there you go. Now, what this does that I don't think is very clearly told in the beginning, though, is because of how scales are built, you're not playing all the same type of chords. You're actually playing three different type of chords in just that scale. You are playing three different types of chords. That's very important. And those three types are major, minor, and diminished. Now, you can guess if you think you know which ones are major, minor, and which one is diminished within that. But I'm going to tell you right now, so pause if you want to figure that out. We have major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, there's the diminished major. So that last one is diminished before we come to major. And keep in mind, no matter where you do this, that is the same pattern. If you're playing the scale, blank major, F sharp major, A sharp major, you will have major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished major. Now, that's really helpful, that's really easy. Now you can play a scale through and through or chords through and through a scale. But what it does that's unfortunate is lock you into one type of expression. Major to minor to minor to major to major to minor to diminish to major have a particular sound. And that's not going to change anytime soon. That's not going to change ever. You might be thinking, I want more chords. Let's get broad. Let's get, how, how can we build different chords? knowing that we have different scale types. And keep in mind, I will explain a better way, I think. This is just fascinating and another way to think about it. But skip here if you really want to just learn how to build chords from scratch. So let's say, let's play C Aeolian or C minor. Remember, instead of, we're gonna go, So we're gonna go C, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. Now, let's skip a note in between on C minor and see what happens. We're gonna go. Wow, much different. That was way different than C major. Let me play that side by side. They definitely sound different, and we have a whole different combination of chords. In C Aeolian, we go minor, diminished, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. Once again, that's going to be minor, diminished, major, minor, minor, major, major, 
and minor. So now we know a few different chords. And we want to not be stuck to that formula. There is a way of building unique compositions called borrowed chords. And it's particularly why a chart like this is helpful and why I made it in the first place, trying to get more interesting sounds. And what you might do is look at all of them in a row. We can interchange kind of the one, two, three, four, five of other chords. We're going to call the first chord one, the second chord two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on, you know. So the one of C major or C Ionian is the C major. The one of C Aeolian or minor is the C minor. So with that in mind, if we were going to go C major to F major, that's the one to the four in the C major scale. But we want that to sound a little different. What if we played the minor four chord in the major scale? I know this is getting a little wordy, but just know that instead of playing the four from here, we're gonna play the four from the minor. And you can see why you might wanna chart because that gets very jumbled very quickly. So let's just do that really quick. We're gonna go C major from C major but we're gonna play Aeolian's F minor. F minor falls there. So we're gonna go. Whoa. That had a different vibe. If we were just doing C Aeolian, we would go. If we were just doing major, we'd go. But now we're going to mix the first and the second one we're playing. That is a pretty cool sound, and it wasn't in either of those scales. So you can take any from the seven you have and mix them up in line. You can go, oh, I want to play C to D minor, like the first two of Ionian. But in Phrygian, we have E flat major. Okay, let's try that. So we're going to go C major, D minor, then we're going to play Phrygian's third, E flat major. Okay, that had a weird sound. You can play around with this all you want and get very interesting sounds. So definitely make a chart like this. It's worth it. And yeah, the second thing I'll put on screen is how to annotate and name chords. This chart doubles because I have C. C with no other marking is going to be major. If you put a minus mark next to it, it's minor. If you put a little circle, it's diminished. So it's very easy to write C, D with a minus sign, E with a minus sign, then just write F. Just write G, write A minor with a minus sign. And then because B's our diminished chord, just go ahead and write a circle there next to B. And then just C. That's how you would write these. Okay, and now what I think and how I prefer to think about chords, because we're not just going to have three notes at a time. Oh no, that's too simple. Soon we might go... way more than three and it might be hard to keep in mind one you know going and skipping all of the notes that you need to so what we're gonna do is once again like how we learned the formula of the scales we're gonna learn the formula of chords using half steps a major chord is composed of four half steps for the second note 
and seven half steps from the first note for the third. Remember, we're counting this as zero. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. And then if you know the second one in your head and you don't wanna start from the beginning, just count three. Four plus three is seven. So we have our fourth, one, two, three. Now, once we get out into bigger scales, it can be really confusing. And if you need to think on the spot, thinking about what note you're on, counting whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, and then skipping the space in between each note can be very cumbersome. So I'm going to very quickly explain a few other chord types. Feel free to write this down. We're going to say C major seven. Notice how I'm distinguishing major this time. When we said just write C major as C with no annotation for if it's major, that is very intentional. We write major because the seventh, remember we're doing in intervals, the third, the fifth, and the seventh. So we call it a seven chord. The seventh can be minor or major on top of what chord type you have. So that's why if you leave normal majors blank when you write major to distinguish your sevens, your nine, your elevens, your thirteens, it doesn't get mixed up. That's very important. That stumped me for a while and I would play a dominant chord from a YouTube video rather than a major seven chord, so to speak. So we're saying C major seven. And then if you just wrote C seven, you would go the dominant or the minor route. That's very important. So we're gonna count that up. We're gonna go C, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Major sevens are always eleven half steps from the root note dominant sevens, or just simply written whatever note name seven, are ten half steps away from the root note. So for instance, why that's so useful, if I wanted to play G sharp major seven, I would have to go, okay, whole, whole, okay, so I want to forget that one, uh, half, whole, forget that one, whole, a uh, whole half, so I'm skipping that one. Sorry, we just built a nine chord, but you get the same idea why it gets complicated. Whoops. And if you weren't major, you'd have to know on the spot how many steps Phrygian takes to get to whatever chord type you want. And that is far too cumbersome, and it's what I used to do. I find it much faster, no matter where you start, just to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, sorry, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it's 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 gonna be four, three, four, if you count that way, or just keep counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Or if you lose track, you can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. That's a major seven. That's so much easier. Now, let's just go over the other ones very quickly. Minor is going to be major just down a half step on the third. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. This is a minor chord. If you wanna play the minor seven, again, it's just 10 half steps from the start. These will always be the same. And it's really only the third and the seven that you change, or the second or the fourth note you're playing. So, one more time, C minor, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So, if you quickly know the major chord, and you go, oh geez, I want it to be minor, minor seven. Just shift down the seventh and the third half a step. Ooh. 
Sounds good, right? Major seven. Minor minor seven. Or minor dominant seven, I suppose you could call it. There you go. The last one we're going to build is diminished. Remember, we encountered that. It's the seventh on C major. So why don't we just go ahead and count this up? We're starting on B. One, two, three. Okay, kind of like a minor. One, two, three. So the difference between this major, remember, majors four and seven. The second and the third got shifted down a half step. That's why it's diminished. A major would sound like this. So there you go. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's diminished. You know the three main chord types. Major, minor, and diminished. Look at that. Major, minor, diminished. And you also know major seven and dominant seven and minor seven. Yeah, sorry, it's not minor, minor seven. You would just say minor, and typically that would imply a minor seven, but feel free to write it. Again, I'm not a professionally trained musician. I learned from YouTube just like you. But when you see major seven, know it's going to be 11 half steps away. And don't play this, because this is an entirely different vibe from that. And that's why it screwed me up when I was trying to, like, read people's chord progressions. All right, everyone. This has been a wonderful journey. We're nearing our end. You've already learned so much. I'm really proud of you for sticking through. I hope you all have had fun. But we're not done yet, no. The initial reason why I wanted to make this video was for this very moment, this very breakthrough that I've had on my own. Because in the last video and freestyles like this, what scale did I just play? What the hell? is happening. <laughs> I'm sure you really could find and track it down to one scale. But after learning all of that, and we know that scales lock you into a certain type of saying things, how do you break free? And this is what I'm excited to tell you. And the answer for me is not borrowed chords, and it makes my expression so much more interesting. And my other issue with borrowed chords while you can build a bunch of wonderful sounding stuff, I think you'll find, just as I found, that it felt like guesswork. And that, in and of itself, not knowing what it's going to sound like, made the whole ordeal very, very cumbersome. And everything I've taught you so far doesn't really say anything about the predictability of how it's going to sound when you play. You know, I find it very interesting that Beethoven was able to compose after going deaf. How on earth could he do that? How on earth could he do that? Well, you're in luck. Again, we are in 12-tone equal temperament. Each note is exactly the same space apart. What you can do and for this example, I'm only going to be using major seven chords. And for this example, I'm pretty much just going to use major seven chords. The idea is to, and I genuinely want you to write this down, and I'll give you examples at the end of just no talking and going through the actual busy work of it all. And that is, how does a certain amount of half steps make you feel? 
because what you'll find is that it's true throughout the entire thing, no matter where you are. And so if I know that three half steps kind of has this like leaning back and forth, like just saying it again, feel. You know what I'm saying? It does kind of feel like you're leaning back and forth. What's cool about that is even if I'm playing C major still and I get to F and I just want to say it again a little louder and wobbly, I'm going to go up three half steps and I'm going to go I'm going to drop back down to C now I feel like I want to say C kind of back and forth. This is how you break free. I'm going to play each interval. Each interval has its own certain feel. I'm just going to play them. I encourage you to take notes and write down how they make you feel. Because when you're freestyling, even if you're freestyling in C major, But all of a sudden you decide you want to do the step back with F, one, two, three. What's that? This note is not in C major at all. This is how you completely break free from scales and feel the vibe where you want to feel it. C major is set up so that C is the home base. It's how it always feels. C is what we want to feel. I want F to be what we feel. What about five steps down? Or get this, seven steps down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're in F. Let's do... So that's kind of interesting. You know, let's just make F what we want to feel, because why not? Let's go down five steps. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Whoa. Okay, that sounded really good going down five half steps. And what's so cool about that is now when you're freestyling, if you want a certain feel, you can just go for it because you know how it's going to feel. And a lot of these things aren't in the scales that you're playing in. I want to modulate down four to G sharp major. That sounds pretty cool. A four step modulation has a nice airy kind of whimsical feel to it. We can do the same up four. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, C to E major seven. So I think you get the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and do no talking and just give you references for all of this. So I'll start from C, give you what a half step modulation sounds like in both directions and same with two steps, same with three steps, same with four steps, same with five steps. I've already done this and wrote how it makes me feel. And what's cool is that that is reliable. It's a little different than borrowed chords where I say, okay, well, Phrygian has whatever blah 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 chords, so we're gonna play that instead of that, you know? We now have some predictability, and you don't even have to do it in chords. What's so great is, even on things like guitars, where if you just start on a note, you can go 
four half steps to five and it sounds good. No matter where you are, right here, one, two, three, four, five. We're building a predictable library of emotions. So let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and play that all for you. Please, please write down how it makes you feel or just think very actively about this. And then uh, that's gonna be the video. So you've learned the names of notes, how many notes are in an octave, what whole and half steps are, how to count intervals. You know where the chords come from. You know the seven different scale types. You know what modes are. Um, you know how to build your own chords. You know how to build a major. You know how to build a minor. You know how to build a diminished. There are more, by the way, but those are your main three. I'll leave links to other videos if you, of course, want to continue your learning. Um, and now we know how to play in a scale. And you know how to freestyle and how to have predictable, watch this, emotions. That was a seven half step thing. So we're gonna do that one more time and get that super nice resolved feeling. Just, it's, it's just vibes, man. It's just vibes. We're gonna do that one more time, watch. No matter what chord we start from. So, one more time, I'm gonna do the seven half steps. Same vibe, no matter where you are. Major nine to major nine. C to F. Remember E to A. C to F. It's the same vibe. So you can learn that you only have to memorize 12. There's only 12 spaces you can go. So if you write down how each of those make you feel, you don't even have to worry about the scales. You can just play based off of pure vibe and intent. I'm going to go ahead and do that now for you. And I'll do it all in major seven. So that there's no interchordal movement. That's the one thing I have not taught you in this video. And it's because, honestly, I'm not there yet either. When I can describe it to you, I will. But moving a certain amount of intervals and changing the chord type is a whole different story. So we're just going to keep the same chords for now. So it's the same as if we were just playing one note. We just have three other supporting notes because it's the same amount of spaces. Let's begin.
All right, and now I'll do the same thing down. Pretty much the same vibe. I think it's just worth giving you that confirmation of being able to hear it down as well. So, now you know. That's everything I could have possibly taught you. Good luck with your learning journey. You'll go on to do great things. Thanks for watching. Bye now.